Live from the Stone Conference today in New York City, joining us now to discuss her best idea. It's in biotech. Is Stempoint Capital CIO and managing partner Michelle Ross. It's nice to see you. So nice to see you too. Thank you for sitting down with us after you got off the stage with this big idea, which is Crenetics. Is yes. that? Crenetics Pharmaceuticals? Yes, it is. Tell us about it. So Crenetics is really unique. It is the pioneer, one of the pioneers in an area of endocrinology. Endocrinology is how the hormones work through our body. But the really unique piece here is that the GLP-1 class that has moved into obesity and obviously diabetes is the basis of this endocrinology market as well. And we really do believe that the kind of opportunity set for GLP-1 adjacent companies is tremendous. And we, we, we talked about this in January. Of course. I'm, uh, I'm, I think Crenetics is in a prime spot, independent of their own research and multiple endocrinology indications to benefit from this tailwind as well. Are we at that stage where we need to look far beyond the number one players in GLP-1 and we need to go to the, you know, as you say, the adjacents. Is that where you're going to make money now? I believe that there's the kind of dual track opportunity. I think that the lead players here with Eli Lilly and Novo Nordis are going to have a phenomenal opportunity ahead of them. But there's a lot of things structurally that are changing in this market. So in the next two to three years, we do expect an oral pill to come in and take the lead as the main way that this drug is administered. And that's an ability to grow the market. There are also side effects that are quite common. We've discussed muscle loss and you know, nausea. We're going to see other companies produce drugs that are going to set up for that next wave. So believe in those first lead companies, but definitely believe that there's going to be those who want to step in and partake in a $200 billion opportunity. It probably won't stay a duopoly. Wow. So, Carrie, um, Carrie Firestone, by the way, used to run the healthcare and biotech fund at Fidelity. Wonderful. So you know the space better than most. What do you make of the, the stock, the play itself, and how we should be thinking about opportunities to make money in a space you know so well? Yeah, well, congratulations for owning the stock because I just looked at it. I didn't know it until I just yeah. looked a few minutes ago, and it's been fantastic. So um, I, I would love to hear your view on these things. Um, is, is there um, a molecule in clinical trials that's oral? Do they have an oral? Um, what stage, what phase are we at? And do you believe that uh, eventually we can bring down the price because everyone in the world or half the people in the yeah. world can be on it, but no one can pay the price? Absolutely. We're starting to bankrupt institutions who self-insure and can't afford to have all their employees take the GLP-1 drugs. So the incredible piece about Crenetics is actually they are the adjacent to the okay. opportunity in the sense that there are 72 independent endocrine disorders that exist in the world. And ultimately, people are going to go into their physician's office and say, you know what, I think I'd like to be tested for a GLP-1 drug. And it will not be appropriate for them. There will be another endocrine disorder that they potentially have, 4.8% of the population is an undiagnosed endocrine disorder. So that's tens of millions of people. So really you're actually benefiting from this tailwind of people attempting to you know, partake in this opportunity. Now, Crenetics platform is what we're very excited about. They use a pathway where they are building oral drugs. So to your point on cost, absolutely. We think an oral is going to be a key piece of that market growth over time, getting the cost of drugs to come down, particularly in such an important area. And then the proliferation, which kind of like statins that we saw when Lipitor came onto the scene, 1997 it launched. At this point, you have 40% of the U.S. adult population on a statin. We think that that market potential has applicability to GLP-1s. So if you're in the market as the lead players or if you're ancillary to it like Crenetics, there's a tremendous opportunity here. The, um, the holy grail really in, in medicine and research and all these drug companies is cancer. Yes. Um, it plays into why we're here today, obviously, for this incredible cause that we're all helping, hopefully, to support. Maris is a company you're focused on as well as Syndax. Yeah. S NDX. Can you talk about that? Um, because it does play a direct role in pediatric oncology, yes, correct? Yes, and I, and I said that this morning during my pitch. It's really phenomenal to be here supporting this cause and what they're doing. And Syndex, to your point, has filed with the FDA a drug for a rare form 
of pediatric oncology. It's pediatric leukemia, in fact. And interestingly enough, a lot of the early research that went on for this work, the clinical research, was right here in New York City, done at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which was the 2023 grantee from the Sloan Conference. So I think there's a, a really fascinating tie to that. And we're incredibly optimistic about what that drug is going to do for patients and the long-term trajectory of that. And you did mention Miris. Yeah. Another company that we are incredibly focused on the long-term impact that they are going to have with patients who have head and neck cancer. Now, unfortunately, this is an area of cancer that has not been fully covered by the existing therapies in the market. There's a lot of room for improvement versus the existing therapy. By the middle of this year at a medical conference, we should see Miris's updated data in that head and neck cancer indication. How many stocks, how many stocks do you own at a, a given time? And what is your broad view on just investing? For those who don't um, have the time to do the bottoms up research yeah. and are looking yeah. at the space more broadly, are you are you more optimistic about it now after a couple of tough years? The twofold, I think the great thing about biotech, it will always be there, is how idiosyncratic it can be versus the general market. And I've been listening to everyone's comments early this morning. It is tough to want to be able to fight some of these bigger themes that are going on on the macro level. Biotech will be tied to that because we are a long duration asset in totality. But when there is great data and when there is going to be a meaningful improvement in the health of our population and patients globally, that has an impact and can actually turn its way into you know, a phenomenal outperformance. I mean, we talk about Kernetics over two years, they had a 200 percent outperformance versus the XBI, the biotech ETF, during those three years that were quite difficult. So yes, I absolutely believe stock picking, idiosyncratic nature, and themes. Oncology being a great one. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate the time very much today. Michelle Ross joining us here from the Stone Conference. And we'll see you again. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right.